I uncovered their affair and got payback. Now they plead for my support. The autumn evening was cool with leaves rustling in the gentle breeze. Sophie sat on her front porch, sipping her chamomile tea and enjoying the peace that settled over her suburban neighborhood. Her husband, Lorn, and their daughter, Yuna, had gone out for their usual Saturday dinner. Sophie cherished these moments of solitude, but tonight felt different and uneasy feeling gnawed at her. Her phone buzzed on the table beside her. It was a message from an unknown number. With a mix of curiosity and apprehension, she opened it. The message was brief but devastating. You deserve to know the truth. Attached were several photos of Lorne with another woman, their behavior unmistakably intimate. Further down, there were pictures of Una with the same woman, their body language disturbingly close. Sophie's heart hounded in her chest as she scrolled through the images. The betrayal was glaring and undeniable. The two people she trusted most had deceived her. She knew she couldn't act on impulse. She needed to understand the full extent of their deceit before confronting them. Determined to uncover the truth, Sophie hired a private investigator named Jack, a meticulous and discreet professional. She needed to know everything the duration of the affair, the depth of their deception, and the lies they had told to cover their tracks. Jack was efficient. Within weeks, he provided Sophie with a comprehensive dossier of photos, videos, and transcripts of conversations. The affair had been ongoing for over a year, the other woman, Anna, was someone Lorne had met through work, and Yuna had been drawn into the deception as well. The depth of their betrayal was staggering. The realization was devastating, but it also fueled Sophie's resolve. She couldn't simply confront them with accusations. She needed to expose their betrayal in a way that would leave a lasting impact, a way that would make them truly regret their actions. Sophie began to formulate her plan with meticulous care. She started by organizing all the evidence Jack had gathered into a detailed file. She documented every lie, every meeting, every promise they made to each other. She even created a timeline to show the overlap between their deceit and their interactions with her. Next, Sophie began to subtly manipulate the situation to her advantage. She encouraged Lorn to spend more time at work, knowing that he would use the opportunity to meet Anna she planted small, seemingly innocent questions in Yuna's conversations, designed to confirm her suspicions without raising theirs. Sophie also started to distance herself emotionally, preparing for the inevitable confrontation. She needed to be strong to ensure that her revenge would have the desired impact. She wanted to make sure that when the moment came, there would be no room for denial. The opportunity for Sophie's grand reveal came in the form of their upcoming anniversary party. She and Lorne had always hosted a large gathering for friends and family to celebrate their marriage. This year, however, the party would serve a different purpose. Sophie spent weeks preparing for the event, ensuring that every detail was perfect. She invited all their close friends, family, and even some of Lorne and Yuna's colleagues. She wanted as many people as possible to witness the fallout. The night of the party arrived, and Sophie played the perfect hostess, she greeted each guest with a smile, her heart pounding with anticipation. Lorne and Yuna were there, laughing and chatting as if nothing were amiss. Sophie watched them closely, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. After dinner, Sophie stood up to make a toast. She held her glass high, her voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Thank you all for coming tonight. She began, her eyes scanning the room. I have a special presentation for you. She signaled to the air view technician, who dimmed the lights and started the slideshow. The room fell silent as images and footage of Lorne and Yuna's affair with Anna played on the screen. Gas and whispers filled the air, the shock and disbelief palpable. Lorne's face paled, and Yuna looked like she wanted to disappear. Sophie looked at them, her expression cold and unyielding. This is what betrayal looks like, she said, her voice filled with bitterness. This is what infidelity feels like, and now everyone knows. The party ended in chaos. Guests left in shock, murmuring about the scandal that had just unfolded. Lorne and Yuna were left to face the fallout, their reputations in tatters. Lorne tried to reach out to Sophie, but she refused to listen to his excuses. Yuna disappeared from the event, unable to face the consequences of her actions. Sophie filed for divorce the next day, and news of the affair spread quickly through their social circles. Lorne lost his job when his employers found out about the scandal, and Yuna's academic prospects were jeopardized. They had planned to start a new life together, but instead, 
they found themselves isolated and ostracized. Sophie focused on rebuilding her life. She threw herself into her work, finding solace in her friends and family. But the emptiness remained. Despite the satisfaction of seeing Lorn and Yuna face the consequences of their actions, the betrayal had left a deep scar on her heart. Months passed, and Sophie began to find a new sense of normalcy. She moved to a new house, hoping a change of scenery would help her move on. One day, as she was sorting through her mail, she found an unmarked envelope. Inside was a single piece of paper with a cryptic message. You don't know the whole story. Meet me at the old cafe Cornrow at noon. Sophie's curiosity was piqued. Who could this be? What more could there be to know? Despite her better judgment, she decided to go. She needed closure, and this could be her chance to get it. The next day, Sophie arrived at the cafe, scanning the area for anyone who might be waiting for her. A woman approached her, her face partially hidden by a large hat. She introduced herself as Claire and as a strange sister. I'm sorry to contact you like this. Claire began, but there's something you need to know. Anna and Lorne didn't start the affair on their own. They were manipulated by someone else. Claire's revelation left Sophie stunned. What do you mean they were manipulated? She asked, trying to process the information. Claire explained that Anna had gotten involved with a dangerous group of people who used blackmail and manipulation to control their members. Lorne had become a target because of his connection to Sophie, who was a successful entrepreneur. The group saw an opportunity to gain influence over Sophie through Lorne and Anna's affair. They threatened Anna, Claire said, her voice trembling. They said if she didn't go along with their plan, they would ruin her life. And Lorne, he was coerced. They made him believe that you were in danger if he didn't comply. Sophie felt a mix of anger and disbelief. She had thought she knew the full extent of the betrayal, but this new information painted a more complex picture. She realized that Lorne and Yuna might not have been entirely at fault. They had been pawns in someone else's game. Determined to uncover the truth, Sophie began working with Claire to investigate the group behind the manipulation. They spent weeks digging through documents, following leads, and interviewing people who had been affected by the group's schemes. They discovered that the group was led by a man named Victor, a ruthless businessman who used blackmail and coercion to get what he wanted. Victor had a network of associates who helped him carry out his plans, and he had targeted Sophie because of her success and influence. As they gathered more evidence, Sophie realized that she couldn't let Victor get away with what he had done. She needed to take action, not just for herself, but for everyone who had been hurt by Victor and his group. With the help of Claire and Jack, the private investigator, Sophie devised a plan to expose Victor and bring him to justice. They gathered all the evidence they had collected and presented it to the authorities. Sophie knew that confronting Victor directly would be dangerous, but she was determined to see it through. The day of the confrontation arrived, and Sophie felt a mix of fear and determination. She arranged a meeting with Victor under the pretense of negotiating a business deal. She wore a wire, ensuring that every word Victor said would be recorded. As they sat in Victor's luxurious office, Sophie played her part, pretending to be interested in Victor's proposals. But when the moment was right, she confronted Victor with the evidence, revealing the full extent of his manipulations. Victor's calm demeanor cracked, and he tried to deny everything. But Sophie's determination and the mountain of evidence were too much. The authorities, who had been listening in, stormed the office and arrested Victor on multiple charges including blackmail and coercion. With Victor behind bars, Sophie felt a sense of relief and closure. The group's influence was dismantled, and many of their victims began to rebuild their lives. Claire was able to reconnect with Anna, who had been deeply affected by her involvement with the group. Sophie reached out to Lorne and Yuna, wanting to hear their side of the story. They met in a quiet cafe, and both of them tearfully explained everything. They admitted to their mistakes and the fear that had driven their actions. They expressed deep remorse for the pain they had caused Sophie. Listened, her heart heavy with conflicting emotions. She realized that while the betrayal had hurt her deeply, she couldn't deny the manipulation and fear that had driven Lorne and Yuna's actions. She decided to forgive them, not just for their sake, but for her own peace of mind. In the months that followed, Sophie focused on rebuilding her life. She continued to work on her business, finding new joy and purpose in her career. She also deepened her relationships with friends and family, cherishing the support they had given her through the ordeal. She and Lorne decided to remain friends, 
both understanding that their marriage was over but wanting to move forward without animosity. Yuna, too, sought redemption, working with Claire to help the victims of Victor's schemes. Sophie's journey had been long and painful, but she had emerged stronger and wiser. She had learned the importance of forgiveness, not just for others, but for herself. She had taken matters into her own hands, not out of vengeance, but out of a desire for justice and healing. Years later, Sophie stood in the garden of her new home, watching the sun rise over the horizon. She felt a deep sense of contentment and fulfillment, knowing that she had turned her pain into a force for good. Her charity work had flourished, helping countless individuals find their own paths to healing and redemption. She had built a new life for herself, one filled with hope and possibility. As she watched the sun rise, she reflected on her journey. She had faced unimaginable betrayal, but she had emerged stronger and wiser. She had discovered the power of forgiveness and the importance of resilience. And most importantly, she had learned that true strength came from within, from the ability to rise above the hurt and create a future filled with love and hope. And in that moment, as the first rays of sunlight touched her face, Sophie knew that she had finally found the peace she had been searching for.